Shalom, saints. Bless you all. Would you mind giving me a sound check, please? Bless you all. Welcome to this edition of Straight Way Truth Radio Broadcast. I'm your host, Deacon Bell. Just greet you all. Thank you all for being with us tonight. See the tens coming in. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Everybody that's in the chat room and everybody that's listening. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. All right, thank you, bro. thank you, Saints, for the thank you. See what's coming good. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to be talking about thoughts, Saints. Um, it's pretty much a part two um, to my last blog talk, uh, giving no place to the devil. But um, yeah, we're going to talk about thoughts. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter thirteen, verse twenty-two. We post that, please, my brother Ugly. You know, so we have an outreach to minister to you all. Most of all, thank the most high for allowing it as well. So Luke, Luke chapter 13, verse 22. And he was going through the cities, just teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Out of, out of the um, scriptures version, brother, Ugly, this one. And someone said to him, Master, are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, because many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. And when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open for us. He shall, he shall answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. And of course, they shall begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he shall say, I stand to you I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all the workers of unrighteousness. Of course, the King James says iniquity. That scripture came to me when I was coming home from work today. It just it really just broke my spirit. It's like, man, Father, it just, that, that, your, your word is really true. You know, when I was thinking, like, your word is really true. And that's a painful truth. The reason why I believe he brought that to me because I was talking to a Christian woman today at work for a little bit. And of course, you know, she was just talking about the, the churches out there and the, and the problems they have in them and, and pretty much the deadness of it. Now, you know, and of course, we all know that that's not, it's not, y'all's not in those churches out there. We, we hear, you know, Pastor Gibson says it all the time, come out of her, my people. And, and, the, and a lot of these people that, you know, their hearts are, some, well, they might be, they, they might be sincere, but they're, in the, but they're, they're misguided and they're in the, in the wrong place and they're trusting in these organizations. You know, but it, it, it's a sad thing, you know, and I tried to try to convey to her that, uh, you know, that, that system broke and is dead. The preachers are bought and paid for. You know, they stick with the, they stick with the um, training they get. You try to um, talk to them anything, anything outside of that, that, that training they have, they're not going to, um, they're not going to receive that or not go along, go along with the scripture. You know, like pastor said, that meeting, you know, you see how these Christians hate the word and, and it's just the truth. They, they, they really do. You know, they, they despise the commandments. You know, of course, they do everything, supposed to do everything Paul said or everything in the New Testament. But, you know, you look at the way we live, they call us a cult, but yet they can't live a, they don't live a third of, of what we do, what, of what we live, not even a tenth of it. The, the smallest measure, they can't, they, they can't and won't even do that. But they, but they sit as judges. But, but when I was reflecting on that scripture, it just, it just really just floored me, you know, because it's the truth. The few are going to be saved. And thanks, we don't need to forget that. We need to have that fear of Yah in our hearts that we, you know, we are Israel. But few are going to be saved. Don't worry about the Christians out there. But few of Israel is going to be saved. And that, that that's where we need to make sure we are. We got to keep our heart and our minds in the most high. 
seeking after him, pressing to, pressing to enter in, not getting slack, not getting complacent, not being lazy, but keeping our fire burning, you know, keeping oil in our lamps, walking in obedience to the Most High. But hallelujah, that was some of my thoughts this evening. After, after the Holy Spirit that brought that to my to my mind. But let's go to um you know forget the way is now. Let's go to um first Peter chapter four, verse twelve. And it reads, Beloved ones, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you to try you as though In the same way it reads in the King James, switch back to that. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You know, when we you know, when you, go, when you go through certain things, you know, it, it comes upon you as a strange, you know, it, you may think it's strange, or, or it just comes, it comes out of nowhere. You're like, what's going on? Attack like that. Why is that? Oh, why is brother so-and-so cutting the fool with me all of a sudden? You know, he, yesterday we're talking, now he uh, won't answer his phone. Like, let's say, for instance, brother ugly won't, uh, won't, won't, won't talk to, uh, won't, won't answer uh, brother Jermaine's text or something, because they had a falling out. And um, and then the brothers, brothers, went, why, why, why can't we talk about this? You know, you know, but people sometimes get, you know, people do get acted up by spirits. You know, brother get offended at you for something stupid, and he acts silly on the phone, won't, you know, won't answer your text over, you know, just over nonsense sometimes. You know, so we gotta, you know, don't don't think it's strange when things happen. That might not be the best example, but you know, but don't don't think it's strange, you know, because we all want to get the the house of times his kingdom. You know, you're doing your spiritual warfare prayers, bar, you know, breaking curses, sending things back. Don't think the devil's the, 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 don't think the devil's not going to shoot back because he is. He's not going to uh, just uh, just uh, let let us uh, fight him and not throw the, throw the punch. <laughs> brother, types in the chat. I didn't like brother Jermaine's bow tie. <laughs> then the spiritual war starts. <laughs> but how do you think? Let's go to um. Psalms chapter 4, verse 4. And let me get there. But I tell you, getting get ready for this message, for this study, when the Father gave it to me, I tell you, I had, a, had, a, had, a, had, a, had a lot of thoughts going through my mind. A lot of thoughts I had to check, cast down, you know, just engage in the warfare and, and just look to see what's, what's flowing in my own heart, you know. Because Jesus said, all the abundance of the... Oh, let's go there. Hold on. Let me find that scripture. Where is it on my page? Uh, let's go to Mark 15. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's go to Psalms 4 first. I'm sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Just excited to be with you all tonight, saints. I really enjoy this time with you all, this fellowship, just being with the body of Christ. I really, really enjoy y'all and love you all dearly. Hallelujah. Psalms 4, 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed, and be still. Selah. You know, that's a good time sometimes when you're in bed to stop and think. Your own heart, what's the communication of your heart? You know, communing with requires communication. So what, what's, what, what's your heart bringing up when you're on your bed, when you're, when you're listening to it? Does it bring up a bunch of accusations, fears, business, uh, business from the day that you didn't get right, that you should have gotten right? You know, do, you know, do you lie, lie down and go to bed angry against what the scripture tells us to do? You know, because, you know, let's say you wake up, let's say you might, you might, you might wake up all of a sudden in the middle of the night, oh, you know, all, all freaked or something. You know, you had a, something you could have seen that day could have got, had you all, got you all jacked up or an encounter with somebody could have, could be 
lodged in your heart because you didn't get it right. You didn't pray over it. Didn't 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 go. To the, first of all, you didn't leave your gift at the altar and, and get get the situation right with whoever you may have had a run in with. If you had an argument with your brother or sister, you didn't. Hey, look, I'm brother. I'm please forgive me. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have acted that way. I'm, I'm you know, whatever. You, you, you give the reason you want to give, or or just just tell me the truth. Hey, look, I'm just jacked up. I'm going through a battle and I'm not handling it well, or just whatever may cause us to act out of character and get in the bad way. You know, when I was laying on my own bed, let me, let me find my paper. Where did I write that at? I was, um, I had some thoughts. Wait a minute, this one. Where's that paper? Oh, yeah. I had, I had some thoughts that came to my mind when I was on my bed. This was, this was last week. I forgot what day it was. But anyway, I was, you know, trying to, trying to pray that morning, and I, and I, and it really felt like the the heavens was brass. I wasn't getting nowhere. I'm like, man, Paul, I just can't. I can't. I'm not. I don't, feel like, I don't feel like I'm really doing any good this time praying right now. You know. And so 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 I um uh, end up um you know of course I end up stopping praying whatever. And I, and I was going. Uh, I was at the gate, our front gate up here. And I was closing it when I thought, when I drove through it. And um when right then and there when I when I was driving through the gate, when I parked the truck and I you know stopped my vehicle, got out the gate and closed it. When I got back in the vehicle. It was right then the thought hit me. You should have been praying about those thoughts instead of trying to go everywhere else you were going to go. You should have been dealing with those thoughts of your own heart. And I was like, man, Father, don't want to get a slap in the face. I, like, I didn't think that's what I need to pray about. I was just trying to cast those thoughts down and, you know, just wait through, the, wait through that murky heart, you know, but that wasn't the case. I was like, well, Father, thank you. I'm glad you didn't let this, I'm glad that didn't get left hanging so I wouldn't have known what was going on with my own self, you know, because well, your thoughts really, um, well, like Pastor said, you know, your, your thoughts are you. You are your thoughts. And then he did another one. Um, he did, I think he had to create a couple of videos around that time about thoughts. So you, if you're searching, put, put in the um, YouTube and um, search Pastor's channel for, you know, type in thoughts. I think, that, or just search that one video, you are your thoughts. The other ones come up. I mean, that'd be a good thing to do to go back and listen and listen to those videos. And then, of course, he talked about thoughts yesterday. You know, your your thoughts um affect your health. You know, yeah, you know, they really they really do. They can cause you to have you know. If you're, you know, think about this. Think about the power of a negative thought. You know, as soon as you hear something negative, you know, whether it's your own negative thought or somebody else's, you know, you feel bad instantly. And then some people wonder why they why, why they're always sick. I mean, if you're a person who has a negative mind, I'm not surprised that you're sick. It really ain't because you know you feed that ne- that negativity as a good home base to work from. You can start up and set your body up for any, every every type of disease and sickness and and, and y'all knows what else to, to start working. And you wonder why you're full of parasites <laughs> because you're too you're too full of negativity. But hallelujah. Um, I had one thing I want to read here. Wait, what was it? Yeah, uh, one thing about you know, even, even about our thoughts and our minds. You know, think about this thing. What is what is your disposition? You know, are you generally a, a happy person, sad person, easygoing? You know, how you want you know describe yourself? But think about think about your disposition though. Is your disposition to bring forth the type of fruit that someone wants to come, come and be around you? You know, or have accusations that come against your brothers and sisters. Well, how come nobody will want to come to talk? Nobody, they always leave me alone most of the time. Nobody ever really enjoys being around me. Well, you know, <laughs> it's a good thing. I'm glad you you, you asked ask those questions because the problem is, the problem is you. You'd be surprised if you get right and change how, how much the atmosphere would be different. People might want, they, they might want to be around you. Instead of you being the, you know, the, what the saying pastor brought up yesterday, misery loves company. You know, I don't want to be around nobody. I'm sorry. You, you be miserable, you be miserable. I'm going to go somewhere else. And I, I work with an individual that's very, that's very negative all the time, too. It's like, man, I can't, I can't stand to see them coming sometimes. I mean, they're good. The person's a good worker, but, man, are they negative. It's like, hey, hey, how you doing? See you later. I'm going to go over here. I don't want to be around your negativity. You know, bringing, bringing a bad atmosphere in. Oh, what was the last scripture? Uh, okay, let's go to um, let's go to Psalm sixty-three six. Uh, 
heavy saints. Word tells us if you're heavy, you got some people who just heavy. I remember one time I was at work with another brother this years ago, and one of the, one of the employees came in the came, we were in the break room, and one of the um one of the employees came in there in there while we were in there, and I switched yeah there's a woman so she came in there and she brought a heavy spirit in there like man so what happened. <laughs> she had dark clouds and thunder, dark clouds and thunderstorms following her. You know, she didn't say a word, but you know, she just that spirit with her. <clears throat> All right, Psalm sixty-three, six. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, you know, that's David. You know, we remember in the most high on his bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. You know, at night at night time. You know, when you're on your bed, when you, father may wake you up early. That's a good time to meditate. Thinking on good things. Well, the whole, or the most time may deal with it, might have, wake you up at that time, or, or while you're meditating, deal with your heart about some things that you need to be need to be dealing with, or help you to see you in a way that you haven't seen. You know, because sometimes we like to hide ourselves from our from our own selves, from our own flesh. Um, let's see. Well, let's let's go to Job. Chapter thirty-five. Ugly for doing that, being the co-host and posting these scriptures. But I really appreciate that. Oh, let me get that. Let me go to Joe myself. Let me make sure I'm in the right book, Saints. I think I messed up. Hold on a second. Job. I'm going to get the wrong one. Job. Where did I write that? Oh, Job 33. That's for us. Job 33, Brother Ugly, 15 through 17. Start at verse 14. Job 33, 14 through 17. I'm going to go ahead and read. For Yah speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. Well, why is that? Anyway, are we dull of hearing? Heart's not in tune with him? Or he, or he just working to get our attention, but it, it goes on in a, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, the slumbers slumberings upon the bed. Then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. This is the reason that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. It also, it also says he is chased and also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. But I want, I want to focus more upon on, on this one part here. And, you know, he opens he opened the ears of men and seals their instructions that he may withdraw man from his purpose. You know, the things that, they, that, that you know, we got set up in our own hearts that we want to do. Most of it's probably purposes, the, the wrong purposes, of course. But the father got to, hey, no, don't, son, don't do that. Daughter, don't do that. Do this. You know, give us instruction so we can uh, abide in life and, and, and go the way he wants us to go. But still, it's upon the bed, though. You know, a good time for the most high to get a hold of us. Whether it's our bed of affliction or whether it's just, you, you know, when, you, when, when you're resting or coming out of rest and you're laying there thinking. It's just a good time to get a hold of, allow y'all to speak to your heart. Oh, this phone is ringing. Why are you 
caller. Call from wireless caller. All right, how look at that stop. Thanks for getting that, bus, Scott. All right. Let's go to um, Acts chapter 8. You know, looking back at that in Job, I mean, the most high hides pride from man. You know, that that's a good thing, saints, because a lot of times we do go, for, go forth in our own arrogant way at times. You know, you ever had things that you plan, planned out that you just going to do in the pride and your own strength, thinking that, hey, this, this is the will of y'all, and he has to, you know, tur- turn you from that? H- hiding that pride from you? Of, of doing your own will? Because you know, we're very willful, willful people. But anyway, let's go to Acts 8. By the way, how many states have been tried this week with your thoughts? How's your battle been? How's your battle been this week, Buzz Samuel? Been good? Been easy? Been hard? Been rough? How about you, Brother Ugly? I don't mean to pick on you tonight. <laughs> you, you been battling with Brother Jermaine's um, bow tie this week, Brother Ugly? How about you, Brother Joe and Sister Kelly? How about y'all? How's y'all fight been? You, y'all been fighting a good fight of faith up there? Resisting the devil? Hallelujah. All right. I tell you what, let me, let's read up a little bit. I tell you, let's start at verse 9 here, Saints. I'll, I'll skip around a little bit. Well, the story's talking about Simon the sorcerer. Not the story, but the, they're talking about Simon the sorcerer. Yeah, he's always attacking, but, but uh, that's right. Hallelujah. And there's a certain, there was, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because of that of a long time he had bewitched. We wish them with sorcerers. You know, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of Yah and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. You know, of course it goes on with Simon, you know, seeing all this. Let me skip down just a little bit. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of Yah, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the name of the Master Jesus. And then laid they their hands on them and received the Holy the Holy Ghost. And then and, and when Simon saw that through the laying on the laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. You know, this man checking things out. You know, he's used to being in power. You know, so what what what's going on in his mind? What kind of thoughts he got? Well, let's, let's, let's read, read keep on reading here. So he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Peter had to rebuke him, but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of Yah may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, but thy heart is not right in the sight of Yah. That's what I want to get to. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness, and pray if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Now, how many times the saints have we prayed about the thoughts of our hearts being forgiven us? I mean, now we're not, we may not be asking, doing this, going, going before pastor, saying, hey, pastor, I see you lay hands on uh, uh, on 15 people. They all receive the Holy Spirit. I got, I got $15,000. I'm going to give it to you if you give me this power too. You know, we may, we may not be doing that, but, you know, what kind of thoughts we got going on? How many how many thoughts of um, hatred we got in our hearts towards our brothers and sisters that we haven't repented of yet? And, and the Father is not going to exonerate us till we get our hearts clean. You know, or how about, or how about um, fears that we have in our hearts that we, uh, you know, that we have that come up that we um, haven't repented of? You 
You know, that's something too. Or how about um you know, you, I guess you name you, you know your own mind, Saints. I can tell you things in my mind, you know, thoughts we had to repent of, but you know, you know your own minds, your own hearts. But we, you know, anybody been angry that they hadn't repented of yet? The thought of anger? You know, somebody pissed you off at work, you want to kill them? Or somebody cut you off in traffic? Or how about theft? Anybody anybody had thoughts of stealing something from somebody? Just make sure we get our hearts clean. You know, like we will be like Simon. But let's listen to this. Now, he says this. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Because Simon asked them back. Then answered Simon and said, Pray you for the master for me that, that, that none of these things which he has spoken come upon me. And let's go to, um, wait a minute. Let's go to Psalms 36, 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of Yahweh, the transgression of the wicked says within my heart, there is no fear of Yah before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. He devises mischief upon his bed. He settles himself in a way that is not good. He abhors not evil. You know, that, that, that's the reason why. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's read this too. Hold on. Um, go to Psalm 66, 18. Everybody keep Simon the Sorcerer in their mind. Pray, you know, if I guard the nickel, y'all will not hear me. The praying for it. You don't have no confidence in your own walk, in your own heart, for the most part. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Hmm. Anybody dealt with any thoughts of envy? Any thoughts of bitterness this week? Last week? Yesterday? How about jealousy? Or unforgiveness? I think I wrote down the wrong verse again. Where is that at? Let me look at my other page here. Where is that at? Mark. I'm excuse me. Thanks. Go to Mark chapter 15. Verse 10. Hallelujah. Now, it's talking about Jesus when he's standing before Pilate. Pilate here. Verse 10, but Matthew, Mark, uh, Mark chapter 15, verse 10. Will you release, will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. You know, he's supposed to be the men of Yah, right? And they delivered the, the Messiah for envy. You know, you know those, those thoughts. Those, those thoughts went in mind so much. You know, they gave so much place to the devil. They had to, you know, give up, give up, the, give up the Messiah. You know, it's amazing how how the things that are in your heart to motivate your actions make you make you make you do one godliness. You know, these, these priests had feet that were swift to swift to mischief, huh? You know, hated their own brother, their own fellow, um, fellow Israelite that much. They want to. Uh, Get them killed, deliver them to the Romans, all because they're afraid about losing their place. 
We'll start it, brother. Um, I just want to uh, And it came to pass. Oh, hold on a second. Let me look at something. Yeah. All right. And it came to pass in the sixth month, in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, that I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of Yahweh fell upon me there. Hold on. The Lord God fell upon me there. Hold on. I'll read that from the, king, from the scriptures version anyway. Let me go there. It's coming from the scriptures version, Brother Ugly. I was reading. I'm reading that one from that. Sometimes when I'm trying to get my blog talks ready, I'll be reading from the um, scriptures version. Then all of a sudden, I'm reading from the King James. I forget which one I read from sometimes. But anyway, and it came to pass in the 16th and 6th month, on the 5th of the new moon, I, as I sat in my house with the elders of, of Yahuwah sitting before me, that the hand of the master Yahweh fell upon me there. <clears throat> and I looked and saw a likeness, like the appearance of fire from his waist, and and downward, the appearance was like fire, and from his waist upward, the appearance of brightness like glowing metal. And he stretched out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my hair. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heavens and brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem, to the door of the north of the gate of the court, where sat the image of jealousy, where the image of jealousy was, which causes jealousy. See, the esteem of Elohim was there. The Elohim of Yahweh was there. The vision that I saw on the plain. And he said to me, Son of man, please lift up your eyes toward the north. And I lifted up, I lifted my eyes northward, north of the slaughter place gate. I saw this image of jealousy in the entrance. And he said to me, Son of man, please, um, Son of man, do you see what they're doing? The great abominations which the house of Israel are doing here drive me away from my set apart place, and you are to see, and you are still, you are to see still greater abominations. Excuse me. <clears throat> then he brought me to the door of the court, and I looked and saw a hole in the wall, and he said to me, "Son of man, please dig into the wall." And when I dug into the wall, I saw a door. And he said to me, go in and see the evil abominations which they are doing there. And I went in and looked and saw all kinds of creeping creatures and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel carved, carved all around on the walls. And next to them stood 70 men elders of the house of Israel and then Son of Shaphan, each one had a censer in his hand, a thick cloud of incense went up. In the room of his eyes, but they say, Yah does not see us, Yah has forsaken the land. And the king uses the word, hold on, let me just go down here. Says in every man in the chambers of his imagery, you know, of his idols. But you know, imagery. Chambers of what, what, what we do in the dark in, our, in, our, in the chambers of our imagination, saying, so the thought that you have, you forsaken the earth? No. Y'all see. He's not mocked either. He knows what's going on in our hearts and our minds. You know how many times we get tempted with a with a with a wicked imagination that you dwell on too long. You know, <clears throat> imagining evil. Let's go to um, Genesis chapter three. Brother Steve, is it causing some phone? Now, you hear me? 
choppy, choppy. Okay, hold on. How about now? Can you hear me now? Still zero. It kind of says 10, t- cutting in and out, but ugly. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Let's see. Um, we do this. All right, how am I coming in now, saints? Can you hear me now? Better? Better? Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Must be lagging. Okay. You got zero. I just got Okay. You hear me, Brother Ugly? I see that now. Okay. Brother Mike release a 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hate the life. I hate when that, the technical difficulties. Hallelujah. Thanks for the 10, Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. All right. Hallelujah. Did y'all hear me about going to um, Genesis chapter 3? Okay. Hallelujah. So everybody's got 10 now. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Ugly, we'll go to Genesis chapter 3. We'll read verses 1 through 7. Yeah, I tell you, it's technology, modern technology. Mm. I don't give it a 10. I give it a zero. But anyway, it's the avenue we got that we, we, we use. Hallelujah. more subtle than any beast of the field which Lord Elohim had made. And he said to the one, Yea, hath y'all said. Is it true? Oh, wait, hold on. Is it true that Elohim said, Do not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the, the Nahab, We are not eating the trees of the garden. I agree with you, Brother Ugly. Bind boy, bouncy and boys in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And he said, oh. and, then, and the woman said to the flesh, We ought to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Do not eat of it nor touch it, lest you die. And then they, they had said to the woman, You shall surely not die, for Elohim knows. That the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And this is what I want to get to, because this is where her mind starts working. Verse six, and the woman and the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise. And she took up its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her to her husband. And he ate with her. You know, he ate also. You know, so. So what happened after the serpent after the serpent spoke? You know she got to thinking, huh? Thoughts start flowing through her mind instead of instead of a, instead of just uh, having thoughts of obedience to the Most High, doing what He said. Well, I'm under. You know the devil. You know maybe maybe Yahweh is holding out. So I'm, you know I need I need to check this out for myself. You know kind of like a teenager. You know you tell tell your teenage child, hey, son, you don't want to do this or do that. You know, try to give us some instruction. You know, don't do this. You know, I, I can tell you from my, from my from my own personal experience that this is not going to end well. It's not going to go well. If you do this, you you know, profit better. You know, they listen to your instructions. They they be better off. But you know, the nature of man, we, we don't listen to anybody hard. But praise y'all for the wise ones that do take heed when they listen. But anyway, the woman, you know, she had, Eve had a lot of thoughts going on in her mind. Listen, listen to the wrong spirit, the wrong voice. You know, do we do we know y'all when he, the voice of y'all when he speaks in your spirit? When the ruach speaks to you, do you know it when, it, when it's him and when it's the devil trying to tempt you? Just judge the fruit. If you don't, judge the fruit. Um, let's go back to Psalm sixty-six, eighteen again. I'm going to the wrong song myself. No. Let's 
Psalm 66, 18. And I still went to the wrong chapter. Man, help me, G. All right. Of course, we all get some posted, but you got to post it again. Thank you, Brother Ugly. You know, if I regard, regard iniquity in my heart, y'all will not hear me. Maybe that's, maybe that's what happened with Eve. She cut herself off because that, that iniquity in her own heart started, started working. But you know, our own thoughts can sometimes say it's a gender to iniquity sometimes. Can take us, can take us there when we want, you know, we want to get on, do our own rebellious way. Instead of being obedient, you know, we want to, um, do our own will. And that's a sad change. You know, because Jesus said, not my will, thine be done. Don't forget when he was in the garden, he had to struggle too, didn't he? Had to, had to battle his own will. Until he finally overcame, he says, not my will, thy will be done. Then he was good to go. Oh, hallelujah. Right, let's go to Second Timothy chapter 2. Um, verse 25. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. Man, I want this mouse at right. All right, hallelujah. Let me get my mouse that right. <clears throat> and it reads, well, I'll start verse 24. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If peradventure, Yah will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You know, it takes meekness to instruct somebody who's hard headed, you know, who's stuck in their own way, you know, trying to get them to stop, you know, causing them causing themselves trouble, you know, being an enemy to themselves. And that's even trying to get them to, to, to where they can get to a place to repent. You know, the knowledge of the truth. And then they cover themselves out of the snare of the devil, you know. Well, taken captive by him at his will. Now, now that is something right there. You're t- if you're taken captive by the devil at his will at any given time, that means he's got free access to you. You know, you, you, you're here one minute, next minute, you know, like pastors, you ever know, know when you're talking to a devil and somebody? You know, one, one minute they're there, next thing you know, they got spirits speaking out of them. If, you, if you're discerning enough to know when, they, when they're giving themselves over. <laughs> and then they come back to themselves, they come back to themselves like, hey, you, you know, like, um, you know, they're like, well, I, I didn't mean to do that. Now, I'm sure you didn't, but you gave place to the devil. And he showed out again, and you I'm go back to um, back to meditating for a minute. You know, and uh, and uh, when you communing on your, with your own heart on your bed, or when you're meditating, thinking on the Most High, sometimes you ever, you know, you, you know, you know how real the battle is when you try to meditate, and all, from all the opposition that you get from the enemy. You know, you're trying to keep your mind focused. Stayed on the most high, you know, trying to commune with the spirit, and, that, and every time, every time you turn around, the devil's trying to pull you out of that, distracting and pulling your mind back to him, or you know, just always making war. Wait, which is a good thing. I'm glad the devil fights us, you know, because we didn't fight us, you know, we'd be in trouble. Um, let's go to Matt. Oh, wait a minute, we read that one already. Let's go to um, Proverbs 25. Verse twenty eight. I would encourage everybody, to, you know, to meditate. And it reads. He that has no rule over his own over his own spirit 
is like a city that is broken down and without walls. And over in the scriptures version, it reads like this. A man who has no control over his spirit is like a, you know, no control over his spirit is like a broken down city without a wall. You know, of course, in the days of my people, over, over there, they, they, they had cities with walls. It's not like New York City don't have a wall. They just got to, you know, bridges and tunnels and stuff. Or like, you know, even these little towns, you know, you just drive straight through. <clears throat> or most of the cities, you know, you can go from one plot to another without ever having to go through a gate or... We don't, want, we don't want our spirits like that. We don't want, you know, because we should have control over our own spirit. You know, there was, there was a, um, there, a young man that used to fellowship with us who, 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 who always made me think of this scripture that all the time because the devil had so, the devil could access him at any given time, any given time he wanted to. And no matter count, no matter how much counsel, you, you know, he, he received, you know, he'd go from person to person. Everybody pretty much tell him the same thing. And then one day we were in the tabernacle. Um, you know, he, he talked to me, a big teacher, maybe two other brothers. I'm not even sure. Or, or could he talk to us all together? And then I'm, I think Pat was in the back of the tabernacle, and he went over to him. You know, we were all back there, and Pat told him verbatim the same thing we all told him. But still, that 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 young man's mind was made up that there it had to be an easier way that that for him to, to that for him to resist the devil. You know, develop a you know a, a habit of fighting instead of just being passive and, and just giving in and being given over all the time. He just he he just couldn't do it. You know, of course, you know he's out of the faith now, but um, but he's so I, I just say so weak willed, but just so passive that the devil could e- easily derail him at any given time. Just take him over, or just, you know, use his mind, submit thoughts to his mind. You know he. You know, it made him so compulsive in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the things that he had to fight with, you know, that he couldn't he couldn't overcome the, the adversary at all. But you know, we don't want we want our mind. You want, want your mind to be strong. You want it to be armored up. You want your walls built up. You know, don't let the devil. The devil comes to the gate. You turn to take the battle to the gate. Beat him there with the sword, with the word. Just the same way that the Messiah did when he was in the in, you know, in the wilderness when the, when the devil came to tempt. You know, we went over that the last time I was up. You know, so we always make sure we take the word against him. You know, casting down those imaginations and those thoughts that the enemy wants to place into our mind. You know, do you know your own thoughts? Are you discerning your own thoughts when they come? Who, who's speaking to you? Just the fruit. There's a bunch of negativity. You know, that's not yah. Bunch of confusion. You know, it's not yah. Bunch of fears. You know, it's not yah. Much of hate, you know, it's not y'all. Um, let's go to Ephesians. Well, I tell you what, let's go to um, Joshua, chapter one. We're gonna read verses one through nine. <clears throat> and it came to be after the death of Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, that Yahweh spoke to Yeshua. Yehoshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moshe, saying, Moshe, my servant is dead, so now arise. Pass over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I have given to them, to the children of Israel. As the sole of your foot treads, I have given you, as I spoke to Moshe. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river, you, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites into the great sea, but the going down of the sun is your border. No man is going to stand before you all the days of your life. As I, as I was with Moshe, so I am with you. I do not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you are to let this people inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous to guard, to do according to all that all the Torah which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from, from it to the right or, or left so that you act wisely wherever you go. Do not let this book of the Torah depart from you, depart from your mouth. 
but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you you guard to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way proper, proper, prosperous and act wisely. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, nor be discouraged, for Yahweh, Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. Now, looking at that, you see how many times y'all had to tell Joshua to be, you know, to be courageous, be strong. You know, he, he's, he's in a position where, hey, you know, he got a lot of thoughts going on. You know, Moshe just died. You know, Moshe's dead. Now I'm in charge, and I got to lead the people. And, of course, he knows, he knows what kind of people he's leading, too, you know, the people of Israel. Not necessarily an easy group of people to uh, be leading. You know, our people are, you know, other, other are, 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 um or something else. I'll just say that, you know. And he saw all the things that happened in the wilderness. All the people got people died and all, all the judgments that y'all had to bring on his own people too. You know, just every you know, Joshua saw everything. So like I'm sure he probably had a lot of thoughts going through his mind. But he was blessed to have the second generation as opposed to the first generation out there, so it might have been a little bit easier for him. Of course you know, the other you know, the younger generation saw that saw saw what happened and uh you know when you you know when you when you're not obedient too, but um but you know but jo- but the Most High he, I think he really encouraged Joshua only be strong and very co- be only be strong and very courageous he said to him you know they're trying to strengthen Joshua telling them that you know so you sometimes say you got these battles going on you remind yourself let the Spirit let the Holy Spirit remind you, hey be strong and courageous fight the enemy don't 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 uh don't lay down for him resist him he's gonna flee. See, so he's on here. I believe in that in that account, I believe the Most High was armoring Joshua's mind. Let's go to um, Ephesians chapter six. And speaking of armor, let me get the six. Um, Ephesians chapter six, verse eleven. You know the biggest things of Joshua too. You know Yahweh Elohim is with you wherever you go. You know, it's nice to know that, you know, you know, if I was him, I'd be, not, I'd be glad to know that y'all going to be with me. Same thing Moses wanted. Hey, you know, you're going to make me lead these people. I want you to go with me. I always start at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh and the power of his might. Oh, I'm reading some long verse For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the master and the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete armor of Elohim for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, Take up the complete arm of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, taking up the shield of belief, which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim. Praying all times with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching in all perseverance and supplication with all set apart ones. You know, but you see all the armor we're equipped with, saints? Especially, don't forget that helmet. That helmet protects the mind. You know, you got the shield out there blocking, but also a defense. You know, all the armor is there as a, de- as a defense. When, and don't forget your offensive weapon, the sword, the, you know, the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word, and also prayer and supplication too. And let's go to Philippians four eight. You know, so we're not we're not unequipped. We just need to, we need to work on getting our minds changed. Keep keeping them keeping them focused on what they need to be stay what they need to be stayed on. A lot of these thoughts that we do get are distractions. They're just all, all, it, all of it is the devil throwing, throwing them fiery darts, keeping your mind in other places. 
You know, when Peter, when Jesus was walking on the water, Peter had to walk out there. Peter went out there with him. Did y'all remember that account? You know, they saw him. Hey, is that, you know, Peter saw, they, they saw him out there. At first they were scared. And uh, and Peter said, hey, Master, if that be you, bid me to come out on the water with you. You know, how many, how many times we had, had the same situations in our fight? You know, hey, Master, are you with me? You know, you were looking for him. But then we take, like Peter, we get distracted, take our eyes off of You know, instead of looking at the king, we see the winds and the waves blowing, blowing the waters and everything, uh, the waters of our doubts, our fears, our, our self-doubts, our hesitations, our, you know, our angers, whatever, it, whatever it is. We let those things take our eyes off the, off the king, and then we, then, we, then we start sinking, sinking into our despairs, our heaviness, our depression. Which ought not to be. Let's not be of little faith, but let's just, let's be strong and stand. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the most eyes will raise up a standard against him. The Philippians four eight. For the rest, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is righteous, whatever is clean, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report. If there's any uprightness, and if there's any praise, think on these. So we got what we so we we got an outline of what to think on again. I know, I know I've been harping on this, you know, bringing the scriptures back, but hey, it's a, we need to get it locked in to to, to finally we we'll, we'll do it. And let's go to um. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll read verses 2 through 4. We're almost done, thanks. So I'll just start at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and do it the cross, the tree, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yah. We consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. You have not yet resisted under blood, striving against sin. So we shouldn't get weary and faint in our minds, saints. Remember, remember Jesus. And what's will cause you to faint? The bad thoughts, the negative thoughts. Check your heart. Search yourself. Examine yourself. See whether you be in the faith. Don't forget, we do got Passover coming up. That's the next feast. While we're in this dead season, so you should be examining yourself, checking your heart. But also, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which has so easily beset us. That's verse 1. Don't forget, lay that sin aside. You know what your besetting sin is. Oh, let's, let's go to Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. And I don't see Isaiah. Where are you? Right there. Isaiah 26, verse 3. And it reads, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. So if you want to wonder why you don't why you don't have thoughts of peace, saints, myself included, we will keep our mind on. You know, let our thoughts go elsewhere. Sometimes we might we go a whore in our own mind, don't we? Supposed to be staying with our husband, our covering the most high, Jesus. But yet we we go a whore with the devil. He comes knocking on the door and we open open right up to him. And he bring all his bring in all the fears, the doubt, the unbelief. 
We can do better than that, though, saints. The Father's given us the, the weapons to uh, beat our enemy. And don't forget, we have not yet resisted under the blood striving against sin. But I just posted that two times, and it caught my attention. So, hey, let's keep, let's keep resisting. And um, let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11 real quick. And we got one more scripture after that, and we're done. You got that, Brother Ugly? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Of course, thanks to as you all know, read everything in context, please. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You know, why, why, why does he say that? Because he loves us. We're his people. We're his children. That's, that's the Father's thoughts there. And if we do like Isaiah 26, 3 says, hey, we can stay in perfect peace. And don't forget what Pastor said yesterday. You know, your thought about, about the thoughts in our, in our health and everything. I'm going to end with this scripture here. Um, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 and it reads beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper so if you want your next fast to prosper make sure you do something about your thoughts you want to be in health let's get, let's get, our, let's get our minds cleaned up let's have the mind of Christ and not, and not, you know, Doug's mind. Anybody else's mind? You, you know, you don't, you don't put your own name in there. You don't want your mind. You want the mind of Christ. You operate in that. Your thoughts will be better. It can be good. It can be thoughts of peace too. Not, not saying we're not going to have temptations. We're not going to have battles. But let's let's quickly put those things down once we uh, when we enter into them. Let's try to get let's get out of them. Let's get out of them as quick as we can. Let's resist the devil and uh, let's make them flee. And keep fighting the good fight of faith, because you know, we got <clears throat> many good examples of that in the ministry. You know, victory, victory, victory is available. You see, I don't know, about, but I know many of you see a many, many a defeated person out there, even even, even many defeated so-called saints. But you don't have to walk that way. Let them see victory in you. If you cast down, if you're heavy, put on the garment of praise. If you're fearful. Don't forget, Yah has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Don't be afraid no more. Anyway, saints, that's all I got for you tonight. Really enjoyed you all, in spite of the little technical difficulties we're dealing with. I do bless you all and just thank you all for being with me. And just remember to, you know, keep it, keep it, you know, keep keep the pastors in prayer, Pastor Dow especially, keep him in prayer, keep him lifted up. You know, because the enemy's always wanting warn to get our shepherd. So let's make sure we keep keep the man of y'all lifted up. Let's hold his hands up, strengthen him. Y'all make sure y'all let, let, go back and listen to the videos. You know, do everything that you know we we know we should be doing. Sending in your tithes, your offers, being faithful, just being faithful to the ministry. Most of all, just like I say, keep praying, keep keep up the warfare prayers too, because we got many an enemy throwing their fiery darts and their curses. So y'all just keep keep uh. Keep doing what we're supposed to be doing during this season and at all times. Well, anyway, I do bless you all and I thank you all for being with me. I hope you all receive some type of edification from this. And I just thank you all for being here. I just bid you all a good night and shalom, shalom to you. Look at him looking.